I think we do that. Now, <laughs> just smash that land. Just smash it. I know that Kaldheim has been uh, running wild for a few days, and I've been nowhere to be found. Um, but I'm back. I'm at a new spot. I'm in the dark. Sorry about my blinding face. I have run into a bunch of Wi-Fi difficulties. This is the earliest I can get out of the video. Um, but it's going to be a good one today, guys. So at least check out the deck tech. Um, before you go anywhere, um, if you'd like to skip ahead and get into the gameplay, I totally understand. We have three good games today. Absolutely fantastic. Quick, concise, rule smash games. Nothing to complain about. This uh, card, though, has a destroy land clause for the first uh, the first trigger of the saga. The second trigger, you put a land card from a graveyard, right? So the land that you destroy, you can at least get. And then the third one, the difference of land that you have to your opponent, you create four fours for. So essentially, if you have ten... And they have six. That's a difference of four land. So you're going to create four four fours um, with trample as well. So that's a huge blowout, sort of late game. And the play, one that we want to showcase. Uh, we didn't actually get the third trigger, unfortunately, in this video. So if you wanted to see that, uh, we didn't get the footage. I have gotten it off before. But um, being that it's been so difficult, I'm sorry. Um, but we do get the first trigger off quite a bit. And um, it's awesome to see. Um, of course, we are running Smashing Success, guys. So destroy target artifact or land. If the artifact is, if an artifact is destroyed, you can create a treasure as well. So there are some artifacts running rampant. Um, but really, as this is approaching its third trigger, you can lay a Smashing Success and just create more of a difference, put them back on lands, and just hold your presence on board. So what do we need to hold our presence on board? A bunch of big creatures. Questing pieces in here at the four drop slot. We have four Harbingers. Um, and both of those creatures are power four or greater, right? Garrick's Uprising is going to be triggered. We have Bone Crusher as well as a power four or greater creature, a way to help us curve out nicely, being that it has two halves and a small removal spell to take out Luminarg Aspirants before they get too big, things such as that. Another removal spell we have is Frostbite. So you might be wondering, okay, he has to be running Snowlands. If you haven't seen Blessing, Blessing of the Frost yet, which is right here. Now, this is controversial. I went ahead and changed all the, uh, the lands to snow lands because I love this card so much. We have a bunch of power four graders. So really, without even distributing the counters, we just draw a bunch of cards. So for all the snow mana we spend, we get that, um, we get that many counters, right? So four, essentially. And then um, we draw cards. So you can draw a lot of cards with this. Um, it can be a really blowout play. Um, you can bring your Cobra up for just two. Or you can put four counters on a Goose if that's the only thing you can do. And then you have a 4-6 Flyer, which isn't that bad in all honesty. And you just drew a card. So that's the worst case scenario and it's still somewhat decent. Um, so of course the Cobra is here to sort of glide us through the early and mid game. Get us to our Harbingers, start drawing cards, remove some stuff. I'm smashing success early, you know. What we see a lot is if it's like, say it's Orzhov, right? And they have like two whites and a black and you take out that one black, you know, and that was like the black that they were relying on. Then they're stuck all of a sudden. They can't heartless act your questing beasts or whatever. So, um, yeah. And then we look at the two dragons, guys. We do have Terror of the Peaks, but of course the new gold span dragon, guys. Absolutely a powerhouse. Um, you, you know, we just have diversity of uh, threat split between, you know, two, two. And uh, this guy has haste and can help us ramp towards this big six drop. We do have four of these. This is what we, we want to do. We want to, you know, drop the trolls and pop a bunch of trolls. Um, I would have just used that as the intro footage if I did get any, but we didn't. But uh, of course, it's just your classic rule smash with a bunch of big dudes, you know, with the frostbite and the cool little blessing of the frost. And, you know, just, just some new cards sprinkled in there. Um, very fun. The mana base is just right down the middle. And we are running, looks like, 24. We need to hit those land drops and make sure that our Cobra is triggering. So a very classic, very good deck. This is Kaldheim Standard. It was Mythic, okay, the uh, right before. But they placed us back into Platinum 3. I think we're Platinum, or put us Platinum 4, and now we're Platinum 3. So, uh, yeah, um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget, uh, during the course of the video, before you leave, give it a like. It helps other people discover it. And uh, I'll see you guys uh, for more future videos. Um, thank you so much. Okay. All right. So, of course, our uh, our first opponent there, he got a little bit stuck on uh, land. If he got one more land, he would have had a much better time, I would imagine. He probably had a bunch of three drops, um, probably a low, low end of the curve deck. But see, you take out a, a mana like that, and all he had was like maybe a Heartless Act, and that's it. So um, the Cobra can ramp you up very quickly, and that sort of play early can be devastating. 
Okay, so he went ahead and took six, leading with a blue. We'll lead with this because we're going to double forest. You know, in case he lays a little bit of a... Or if he lays a creature here. Hmm. See, we can't... We only have one permanent, right? So we can't do uh, three damage. That's what's rather... Uh, rather sad. Okay. Oh, we got the Cobra off the top. So we'll go ahead and just do that. Now, the Polywog Symbiote. I made a really cool uh, Mutate deck. Um, Azorius Mutate. My first video that got over 100 views. Um, it just really launched... A lot of stuff. That was that was really cool. Lost my confidence as well. Um, yeah, there it is. The Sea Dasher Octopus. Exactly what I did, actually, in my video. So that's really cool to see. I know a lot of people have done it before. But for one mana, right, you're putting that ability onto something. Now, I want to block almost. But no. We can take out this creature. Okay. Oof, that's dirty. So we can Cobra. Yeah. Get another Cobra. Because as much as I wanted to take him out with the Frostbite there, we need to get like a Goldspan Dragon down, right? Um, he might be running Shore Shark in this deck, I would imagine. So he can start returning things. Getting two Cobras down guarantees we can at least, you know, hit like a five drop here. Um, but yeah, dang. Now, see, now that he's bigger than three, we might have made a mistake. Go ahead and double block. He didn't expect it. I don't even think I'm ready for that. Let's go ahead and top deck a man off the top. Perfect. So I was relying on that. And I know he had three... You know, he only has three cards in hand. He had the mulligan. Okay. So, being that we know that, um, and that when you Voltron, you know, when you're mutating, you need to sort of continuously multi mutate onto something. Yeah, see, that's just a underwhelming play. One that we can capitalize on, baby. Let's go ahead and just do this. Show what we're going to do. And if he chooses the block, great. Sorry, excuse me, guys. So we're putting the pressure on. Don't think he expects us to uh, double block with the Cobra, right? He got a little bit too confident there. I don't think he... Uh, I just had a feeling. I played a lot of Mutate. He was uh, he was feeling frisky. You should never risk, right? He had a nice little stack of Mutate triggers. You should never risk it for, what, three damage? So glad he can't Mutate that onto the, the dude, though. All right, can't swing into that. Ooh, not getting the mana. And we got another card that costs one. So let's go ahead and swing with this. And this. <laughs> and he takes the baits. <laughs> and we'll just follow up with another binger, the one he just... Yeah, no. Did everything he could to get rid of. Not bad. Just these power four graders. You know, if we had a Garrick's Uprising on the field, we would draw in tons of cards. All of our dragons, right? The terror on the peaks start doing four damage to the face. So we just have big, meaty creatures. Obviously, with Gruul's known for. We have some removal with Bone Crusher Giant and Frostbite. And the Cobra just ramps us up to these land destroying cards. And of course, waking up the trolls just being a really fun win con. Hope we can get to that today. But uh, as he makes 100 decisions, I'm going to hit him with the Yurgo to sort of speed him up. <laughs> Nothing like a little friendly nudge in the right direction, right? Okay, we're not getting the dang red. That's unfortunate. We're just getting unlucky. Let's swing and see what he does. Um... I think we take out this goose before he can block. Because. Oop. Sorry, I heard a, heard a noise. <laughs> Sorry, my face must have went like right at the camera. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get the goose. We can lay it. 
we can get a red next turn, and that's uh, that's pretty pretty much GG, right? Because Goldspan has haste. So the mix of these two dragons at a nice diversity of threat, two each, I think is a lot of fun. A lot of fun, I say, but a lot of good. Anyway, thanks for being here, guys. Every one of you watching this video means a lot. We wanted to put out videos for last two, three days, and I've been watching everyone else, you know, do that, and then jump on the Kaldheim train, and uh, here I am. So thanks for checking it out, because this deck is strong, right? So far, it's not bad. Now, we are going to use this red here, hopefully very, very crucially, yes. Go ahead and swing. No blocks. We can just, we can just take six. Um, definitely kind of a silly thing for him to do because he's so close to being dead. Uh, waking of the trolls isn't bad either. Um, but, uh, no, because, uh, this is how we win. GG swing. Get that treasure, baby. Uh, cool, cool. Looks like he wants to block. Guess he doesn't. He doesn't do the bats. GG. Gold span. Good card. And of course, we had just some more ramp to do some more fun stuff. Cool. Starting up in Platinum 3. Let's get into the next one, guys. Yo. All right, guys. So let's get into game number one of uh, Gruel Smash Lands. It's going to be the name. Because we have Smashing Success. We have Waking of the Trolls. Okay. So those two cards um, are Land Destruction. And uh, the difference of land at the end, the last trigger of Waking Up the Trolls, is sort of a really fun, really awesome win con we're going for. Hopefully we get to see it, if the game ever loads. <laughs> Alright, so here we are against Ty Tyago. R. I'm scared. Alright, so a decent hand. We have the Cobra. Okay. We have Frostbite. We have Smashing Success, right? Blessing of the Frost is in this deck because um, we do have a lot of creatures with high power, and a lot of them already have power for it greater. Okay, finally our uh, opponent gets his gets his marbles together. There it is. He'll lead with the tap, so will we. Um, but yeah, as you can see, Harbinger, right? Power for a greater. Blessing of Frost is going to draw us a card for each creature that already has that. Cobra, we'd only need to devote two counters to that in order for us to... Um, benefit from it you'll see what i mean in a second <laughs> anyway there's the cobra not bad we're gonna have to lay this i think then use the extra green that we get from the cobra for the binger and that's a really good line of play nice little curve out there could always go for the mountain and then smashing success right away too I think we do that. Now, <laughs> just smash that land. Just smash it. Get rid of it. What are you going to do? Counter it? Nah, you can't do that. Sorry, sir. You have a green and a white. Unless, does that, does that new card, can you target lands? I think it's like Snakeskin Veil. I wonder what's happening. He might be wanting to quit. <laughs> <laughs> the Cobra into the Smashing Success early is just really, it's really a lot. It's really a lot. Like he's at two mana starting his turn there, right? So whatever he was going to do, he can only do one thing. Most likely, right? Uh, we're just continuously ramping. He does have to devote his turn to take out the Cobra. Whew, look at that. Okay, so. Of course, we can't lay the uh, Binger because of uh, how we went aggressive with the Mountain. So we could take out the land. But I think it was really beneficial because, look, he's stuck on his two drops. Oh, my gosh. Almost want to hit him with a sorry. Um, let's go ahead and lay this. I'm going to draw a card here. Get our mountain on the field. Sega. We have a Bone Crusher and a Frostbite uh, held up ready to uh, take out a little creature. But uh, if he does nothing, let's bop him in the face. Bone Crusher is another power four or greater. But uh, I think we lead with Terror of the Peaks here. And draw a card. Beautiful. <laughs> Frostbite's still online to do 3 damage to something. 
And we'll get another binger. Seems good. Seems good. Awesome. Cool. Really, really nice little game here against Tiago. Too bad he was taking forever at the beginning. Yeah, he just got screwed. I mean, he thought maybe he could coast on three mana, and uh, he's just not hitting that third, I guess. Oh, poor guy. GG. <laughs> All right. He got a little bit screwed, but uh, right away we got to see the power of land destruction, right? Let's get to the next one. Yo, all right, guys. Let's get to the next one here against Enigma. Enigma. Are you having an Enigma? I know I am. Slay the goose. Boom, bam, bang. The goosey goosey. Alright. We can just go ahead and get the binger down. We like the hand because, you know, we had a goose in the binger and we also have smashing success, which is just a fun card. We can really just get very ahead with it. Elvish War Master. Okay. Gonna have to swing with this guy. No, I should have laid that top land. What was I thinking? But being that we got the uh, Bone Crusher, I actually really like just laying this like that. Could have got the Cobra there, but um, getting us closer to our things. But I like the idea since I'm predicting a bunch more little elves, right? Um, just getting this big boy down. I know that the Death Touch Elf thing will be relevant. But he doesn't have him yet. Okay. So the goose here, we're going to need to make a food. That could be really cool. And then these two, let's swing. Put the pressure on. You know, he's going to want to get rid of the one ones. Or the, the smaller guys. Okay, I like it. Yeah, we can get that. Not bad. Let's end the turn. Of course, we're going to get our... Uh, What's it called? Our food? Then we can lay Waking of the Trolls, guys. We gotta show it off how powerful that is. Especially as uh, we approach the last trigger, we can use a smashing success. And that is just tremendous. Dang. Down comes the Tyvar Kel. It's creating little dudes. Wow. That's amazing. So we're making elves out here. Really cool. Really, really cool. Sorry. Anyway, guys, let's see what they do. We'll take that and just uh, get the food. <clears throat> Not too worried about two damage. Big play is about to have another waking. Beautiful. Let's do it. Let's do it now while we can. Take out that one black that they have, right? That could really put them back. Because they only have one of that color. They're sad. <laughs> they are sad. Getting in, baby. Um, Yeah, we're going face. We're putting tremendous pressure towards them. I'm glad we laid that bone crush when we did. Just being bigger than these elves. It's relative, so this this archetype might be fine. Just big, meaty creatures might still just be as fine as it was. Okay. Not bad. It's going to take the four. I respect that. I think you probably should have blocked with that one one, though. <clears throat> Does get to the other black. Of course, they have, you know, he has the ramp by tapping him, but I'm just not worried about him tapping his, all his elves. And, you know, maybe if he lays like an extinction event or a board, board wipe of some kind. Dang, he does take out the waking. We did blow up a land. We forced him to use a removal spell on it. Not bad. Okay, see, now we're getting to the point. 
where we can lay the terror of the peaks. That would probably be the best thing to do. So we can just lay Terror of the Peaks and then rely on laying Questing Beasts and just doing massive damage that way. What we can do is we can like swing with just this guy. <laughs> it's gonna mess around. <laughs> but uh, I don't think he's, well, well equipped really to deal with just four damage to the face and we have the flyer terror of the peaks is going to close the game here for us really cool stuff waking of the trolls did its thing of course we didn't really get much benefit off it is kind of a high a high cost you know a lot of people are saying they wish it was five i think that's a fair argument to make um i think it might have been a little i thought it if it was five mana, I think it would have been just way too good, though. But I can see why they wanted it, because that six mana all of a sudden in the meta, it's just too slow, unless you specifically build ramp to specifically hit it. And you need cards like Smashing Success to sort of make it work because of that last trigger. That's where you get the majority of your value. Garrick's Uprising, one thing, if I haven't mentioned it yet, I'm sure I have, though. We're going to make a bunch of 4-4s um, four that's going to help us draw a bunch of cards as well. Ooh, here's where Blessing of the Frost becomes relevant. I mean, we just do damage. He doesn't have reach, so... Yeah. <laughs> GG's. <laughs> I was like, wait. Alright, let's get into the next one. Hey, all right, guys, so here we are against Blue Cube 428. Let's go, baby. Okay, so we have three damage to any target. Sorry, any creature or planeswalker with Frostbite relatively early in the game. And we could wait for some creatures to trigger with Garrick's Uprising. It's a little bit slow. Guess we'll have to just risk it because I want seven rather than six. Frostbite can hopefully do something. Hopefully they're creature based. Ooh, black. Oh, and then we do get the Lotus Cobra right off the top. So, beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff, guys. Beautiful. Lotus. Lotus, Lotus, Lotus Cobra, baby. Oh, no. Okay, let's get, let's get this down. No real reason to get Garrick's Uprising down. Um, I mean, there is, but we don't have the other red. And um, I would just sort of prefer, yeah, let's do it. To have three snow permanents. <laughs> Cool, and now we can just start whacking him with the Questing Beast. We lay the enchantment after the fact we still draw the card, right? And we don't need to tramp anymore because we took out the threat. There we go. Worked nicely. Goldspan Dragon, I think, will probably just come down, though. <laughs> really depends on what happens here. Okay. Definitely Goldspan Dragon. Let's go, baby. Goldspan! <laughs> You're getting spanned on, dude. You just got spanned on, bro. You got spanned on. Blue Cube 428, what do you got for us? What are you going to do? What is up, bro? <gasps> He's bopping him. We still get a treasure. Look at that value, right? That's insane that they attacked that on. Ooh, we could blow up that one blue. Oh, or we could do this. Yeah, let's blow that up. <laughs> Take away that blue. Oh, look at him go. 
used it at least. We'll just uh, get that on the field. We still have another treasure for next turn. Hopefully we can make a play out of it. Because we can draw a card right away unless they remove this. So really we're at his mercy here, but we're not in any immediate threats. It's foretelling. A little bit of a slower uh, deck. He hasn't done too much, right? Hmm. Makes me think he wants to counter this, and I don't want to use Waking of the Trolls, so let's lead with this. Because if he countered Waking of the Trolls, I would just cry. Yep, there it is. It's fine with me. We got out of his hand, we sort of knew it was coming. Guess I didn't have to lay it, but we got it out. Now, what's he doing? Here we go, buddy. Oh, now I'm thinking, apparently. So we're going to draw a card here with uh, the Binger. Of course, that is just always beautiful. Give it to me. Oh! Yeah, the Glossing Beast. Boom. There we go. So we have what looks to be a good amount of Damioge on the field, guys. Okay. Nice. Let's go ahead and take out that blue now that we have an open avenue, too. We've been picking on the blues. We don't want him to counter anything else. Land destruction, baby. We don't want him picking on us. Let's just lay that. Um, let's get it. GG! <laughs> yeah. Land destruction, baby. It was too much for him. <laughs> All right, guys. So you made it to the end of the video. I know it was a quick one. Um, I've been struggling again, as I've said, to get out a bunch of uh, content for you. Um, and this is what I ended up with. So, uh, you know, hopefully it's somewhat serviceable. This is a very strong shell. We have some very strong cards in here, right? Four mythics there, or sorry, four rares at the top of the curve. We have four mythics here with these big dragons. Um, Questing Beast has always been as good as it was. Blessing of the Frost is a sleeper. We got to see that do a little bit of work. Um, Cobra ramping us. Has always been just as good. And, of course, you saw the other pieces today. Um, go ahead and give it a like if you did find any enjoyment out of the video. It would mean the world to me. I missed a few days of recording and putting out content. So I want to catch that momentum back up. And uh, I'll you know, tune back in for more Kaldheim content. I'm going to put out a bunch more decks in the future, I promise. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Okay?